guys, welcome back to my channel. Corey and I are gonna be doing a Q&A today. I asked you to ask us some questions and we're gonna go through them real quick. So let's get started. First question, what will your plans be when you get back from Thailand, living-wise and whatnot? So when we get back from Thailand, we're gonna be living with my parents. So they have a house with extra rooms and we're gonna be living with them um, probably until next year after we have the baby and everything. That's our immediate plan, is just to move back home to San Diego and live with my parents. Next question, was your pregnancy accidentally announced by a family member before you were ready to publicly share? The announcement thing, or when she surprised me that with the fact that she was pregnant, we did it at my parents' house, and my stepdad had a bunch of pictures that my sister took throughout the whole thing, and she sent them to him, and he actually posted it like right then and there <laughs> while we were at his house, and we didn't know until mid I was like midnight. midnight. It yeah. was like midnight, and she texted me while I was sleeping, I was showing like, me them. Oh my god. Yeah, I woke up at 4 a.m. to these texts because I woke up to go to work and I saw these pictures of me on Facebook and I was like, oh my god, no. Like, I yeah. thought she was going to be a lot more mad than she was, but she wasn't really that upset about it. So I just called my mom and I was like, hey, can you have Anthony take the pictures down? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. my stepdad did post them like 6 p.m. that night. Mm -hmm. A lot of people messaged me saying like, hey, I saw something on Facebook, wasn't sure if it's true, but if it is, congrats. And I was just like, Mer. And then another person actually said the same thing. She was like, I thought I saw something on Facebook, but I don't know if I was dreaming. It was just a dream. And we're like, it was a dream. <laughs> no, it was, but yeah, it happened. It wasn't intentional. There was, it, he was he excited. Didn't, he was excited for yeah. us, yeah. Next yeah. question. So what made you choose the length of this trip? What, what was too short and what was too long to be away? And uh, what are your plans when you get back to the States? So she already answered the second part of that question, but to answer the first part about the duration of our trip, we essentially just picked it because I'm going to school in Cal State San Marcos, and the summer, I, I don't have off because I'm taking online classes, but the fact that I could take online classes gave us about three months to get up and go somewhere that we weren't obligated to be in San Diego. Also, I, you know, being in the military for 10 years, I'm pretty adaptable to stay wherever I'm at. I've had to sleep in some pretty shitty places and stay away from family for long periods of time, so. I'm okay with that, but as far as her and the son, I, I wasn't really sure how they would take like a permanent move or a long-term move, so we figured that three months was a good enough time to absorb and you know dive into the culture and really get to experience Thailand without having to really commit too long of a time mm -hmm. of our lives to stay here. So the fact that I had three months off for school and that it was a good amount of time but not too long just seemed like the perfect amount of time for us to, to stay here. Yeah, I honestly don't think it's gonna be enough though because I feel like we're already, no. we've only been here a couple of weeks and we're both like, it's gonna be really hard to leave because we're so happy here, we love it, so. I think yesterday was two weeks being here and it, it's flown by. Yeah. Like I, I already know, I'm already dreading going home and it's only been two weeks in, so. Yeah, we're we'll gonna miss it for we'll sure. We'll see what happens. The question is, um, what are you guys thinking for baby names? That's a hard one because we don't really agree on any names. I think one name we've agreed on, um, but yeah, it, even with Cruz, it was really hard because he, he didn't, I, he basically gave me that one. He was like, whatever, just name it Cruz. It was her idea. I was against it. <laughs> I was I was gone in the military at the time when she gave me the idea, and at first I just like ignored the message, like I didn't even respond to her. And we have totally different taste. Because my first and, and my initial thought was no, and she actually brought this name up to me in the past before, and I was like no, not at all, no way, not happening. And then she asked me again when I was deployed, and I was like, I sat on it for a little bit, and I was like, you know what, I kind of like it. It kind of grew on yeah, me. Yeah, you just gotta um, keep pushing. This time around, I'm kind of banking on on getting the. The he choice. thinks he's gonna get yeah. I don't know about she that, but like it. he literally likes names that I they're like last on my list. I'm like, I no, for, I would never name my kid that. But it's like, well, I think for girls we've kind of well, agreed because yeah. we we kind of like the not the boy name but like the gender the coed like, gender yeah. names. Like I like boy names for girls. I think we're gonna go with. No, it's hard. So once we find out the gender of the baby, then we'll be able to move forward a little bit more. But when when it comes to boy names, I'm just like. I don't know. Girl names are a lot easier for me. So clearly we have not totally agreed on names yet. Why don't you answer this one? It's in starting in starting your own business, how did you decide the, to pull the trigger and just make it work? I'm at the tipping point where I'm wanting to leave my steady job with benefits and to be my own boss, but I'm straight up terrified I'm gonna starve my kid. Okay, yeah, this is actually a really good one because I was kind of in the same position getting out of the military. I had a very stable job. The benefits were stable, everything was paid for, they made sure I had a house, overhead, food, healthcare, all that stuff. And I, I went straight from that into self-employment. Um, she was a little bit more confident coming from 24 Hour Fitness. She knew that she could build her clientele. So she knew that if she did it on her own, it would 
no, I wouldn't say be easy, no, but yeah. she would have the same success doing it at uh, at a private facility as she did at a corporate gym. Yeah. And it would be more beneficial to do it that way because she would be able to keep more of the money. For me, it was a little bit more her That's talking me into it because yeah. I was, you know, I was kind of like, shoot, I'm going from being in the military to um, being an independent being trainer, creating contractor. my own income. Yeah. Mm. So that was pretty scary for myself as well. And th I think the thing that other than her, you know, really encouraging me to do it, I think the thing that really sealed the deal for us to both be doing it was just thinking about the fact that, you know, between our friends, family, um, our skills we have, I, we sure, we may go into times where we're not making a lot of money or where times are a little bit more difficult, but at the end of the day, I, I have 100% faith and belief in our, in our skills and our, in our, what we can do to, to know that we're never going to be on the streets. Yeah. The three of us are never going to be on it's the streets. It's going to work out. We're never going to be yeah. without food. We're never going to be without shelter. It, it may be a little bit harder at times, but I, I don't think it'll ever get to the point to where life's just over. Yeah. And I think you just have to, you have to kind of go for it sometimes or all yeah. the time, honestly, like everything that we've done in the last couple of years has been pretty scary. Like we've made decisions that could essentially like really change our lives. And if we, I mean, we have a kid, you know, I'm pregnant. So we, we make some decisions that are, most people think we're crazy. Um, but if you haven't noticed, like it kind of works out for us, but it's not because we're lucky. It's just that we try really hard to make things work out for the better and, and we do what we can. We do our due diligence and we work really hard. And so I think as long as you're willing to work for it, then it will, it'll happen. It might be a little bit more difficult than if you did have, you know, the corporate job with the steady income coming in and all of that. Um, but it, it's just one of those things you kind of have to just like swallow the fear and just like do it mm -hmm. and feel the pain a little bit in the beginning and then get past it because it will work. It's it's similar to like the gym, you know, there's so many times where you're like scared to make those moves, but once you do, you just kind of like rip off that band aid and then you, it gets better. So, yeah, I think that if you're, if you're willing to put in some good, honest, hard work and combine that with consistency and anything in life, you're, you're going to be successful. The hardest part is just making that initial step. But we've realized that in, in all the goals we've set for ourselves, they've all been pretty difficult. And like she said, people have called us crazy at first. But once we actually take the step of acting on it and not just thinking about it or talking about it, we've realized that a lot of the stuff we're doing is not very hard at all. Mm -mm. And a lot of people ask us, like, how do you do it? Or, you know, they, they expect it to be hard. But it, it, the, the oh, truth sorry. is... Chris, <laughs> the truth is... You it's can hang out with us. Just sit down, okay? <laughs> nah. Cruzy. One second, buddy. One Hold second. On. <laughs> All right, well, the, what I'm getting at is the, 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 these goals and these achievements and whatnot are really not that hard. You yeah. just got to believe in yourself and do it. Right, baby? Okay, come over here if you want to be in it. <laughs> All right, on to the next question. Not sure if planning is the right word, but what steps did you take this time around with infertility and getting pregnant? Get out here. I'm going to Get out here. His feelings are hurt. Going somewhere else. The next question. Not sure if planning is the right word, but what steps did you take this time around with infertility and getting pregnant? What specific vaccinations did you need? Any difficulties with Cruz and having to take him with at all times, especially during gym sessions? I'll try to. As far as the, the first one, the infertility thing, I'll answer that one really quick and just say that we thought, I mean, we thought we were infertile, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Same thing that happened the first time. Once we stopped trying is when it happened. Yeah. When we got to Hawaii, we're like, hey, let's just enjoy the next three years by ourselves, not have to worry about having a kid, which is when we were initially trying. We agreed on that. Three months later, I got pregnant. Three months later, she was pregnant. Same thing this time. We're like, hey, we're going to Thailand. Let's let's not try anymore just because it's not a priority. I mean, yeah. It's not an, an immediate priority right now. It's not right happening, now. so just, let's just let, like, reduce the stress and just She got pregnant the next it. month. Yeah. So basically, I think that with actively trying, she stresses out too much even, if I, don't, myself a even bit. if I don't think I'm stressing out because I, I really was. don't think I am but I can, apparently I am and it my body feels she it she was very on top I was of tracking every single thing and I was going to acupuncture appointments and I was getting testing done and I kept coming back fine and it's like what you know I should have just like let it happen and it's hard because it's hard to try when you're it's hard not to try when you're trying to do something so you know too much pressure on myself but we didn't go through like IVF or anything like that like we didn't get we didn't get diagnosis infertile, so we hadn't gotten that far. As far as the specific vaccinations that we needed, most vaccinations that you need to go to another country are pretty much given to you throughout your life. Mm -hmm. The the ones that they don't give to you are, are typhoid. And there were a few others that she couldn't get because she was pregnant. 
Cruz couldn't get because he's too young and I couldn't get because I'm taking a, a medication that doesn't allow me to get live vaccinations, guys, which I believe is... Guys, why yeah. are they here all the time? We're going to leave soon, baby. Really, really, really. I think the live vaccinations I couldn't get were like measles and smallpox. Okay, so on to the third question, and this is going to be a... Perfect. Kind of help us answer that question is any and difficulties I'm with Cruz so and having him to take him with all Hold with on. us at all times. We can't even film a Q and A without him <laughs> wanting to be part of it. So I'll yes. let her answer this one because for my training, yes. she's usually at home with him anyways, and I'm doing my own thing. But when she goes to train, or when we go to do things as a family, she's around for pretty much every time. So it is difficult, obviously, to like never ever get a break. Um, back home, we have daycare, so it's nice because yeah. I have you know, him being taken care of for the most part when I'm at the gym and things like that. But here they don't have daycare at the gyms, so I have to take him with me. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's harder. It makes it more, I get distracted and my workouts tend to be a little bit longer. And you know, this is a perfect example. It's just, it does make it harder, but at the same time, he's my kid. And so I kind of, I like no, the- I'm not your kid. My dad's my kid. Okay. Oh, he's only my kid. <laughs> um, He's, you know, he's, He's my baby, and I, I enjoy having him around. And back home, I didn't get to be with him as much, so I think it's kind of cool that we can bring him with us everywhere. Do we need a break? Yeah, I mean, it kind of it wears on you sometimes, and we, you know. And we kind of give each other small breaks in here, yeah, here and there. Like at the mall yesterday, we had walked, we had been walking around for a long time, and he was really kind of starting to get delirious from not napping and getting kind of just out of control. And I could tell she was she needed a little bit of a break, so we were at Starbucks, and I kind of just. Took him around the mall a little bit, took like him to the bathroom, around. and gave her like 10 minutes of space just to kind of like think to herself. So, yeah. We try to help each other small out. Small things here and there. Yeah. And then um, we, just, we just do the best that we can. You know, this is his vacation too. So we try to make him happy by doing things that he likes. And I'm sure he doesn't really love being at the gym, but it is exciting for him to go to like new, new, new places and stuff. I started working at Self Made Las Vegas when it opened here a few months ago. I love it so far. My question is, what are some tips you guys have to growing your business online and at the gym? Yeah, I did a lot of sharing my own my own transformations, my own story, and I think that that helps resonate with other people so they can kind of see themselves in me. And um, I spent a lot of time building relationships and using social media as a way to connect with people. And through social media, I was able to really build my business. So that's really how I went along with it. Um, you can kind of give your perspective on it too, but I think it comes down to just really being relatable to people and doing it for the right reasons, really trying to actually help people um, and using your platform for more than just, you know, your own personal growth, like your own selfies and things like that, like showing how, what you can offer, showing the, thing, the changes that you've made in your personal life, but also showing transitions that you've made in other people's lives too. Yeah, definitely social media is key. Uh, she built hers for, I think, like a year or two before she started getting any any personal training mm -hmm. in Hawaii, which it built her a following. It built people who um, who were watching her and wanted to, you know, essentially achieve what she had achieved at the time. And mine was the same, but a lot shorter of a term. Uh, I don't have quite the following she does. I get a, a lot of my clientele from her. But a lot of what I notice as, as far as building business is... Um, what other trainers do and don't do, you know, what works for others is, is always different. But what I've always been credited for from my clients on why I have their business is because I've showed a lot more for what I can do for other people. Mm -hmm. I don't post a whole, well, right now I kind of do because, you know, we're on vacation, we're on vacation and I'm posting a lot of my stuff, I'm posting a lot of my own current journey. But when I was really focusing on growing my business, I primarily posted my clients, what I did with my clients, the transitions I made with them. And when I did post to myself, it, it wasn't a whole bunch of like professional photo shoots. It wasn't a whole bunch of me trying to really show off like how amazing I am. Mm -hmm. But like she said, really just being real with people and resonating with them because mm -hmm. that's what they like to see. Yeah. When you see a lot of, you know, six packs and just like great six packs <laughs> and these killer photo shoots, yeah. it's impressive. Yeah. But it's unrelatable. It's unrelatable. And the typical person does not have a six pack or are they doing photo shoots? The typical person is somebody who wants to just lose 10 pounds or maybe just had a baby or a guy who wants to get, you know, build some muscle. Yeah. And we, I mean, we used to work out in our garage with our kid watching and I think stuff like that is what really got people wanting to train with us. Cause they're like, well shit, if they can do it, why can't I, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, when you see somebody in, in this highly edited picture, perfect photo, not only are you going to think that that might be above my ability, but it just, there's so much of that on Instagram that you're like, well, who honestly actually knows what they're doing or what they're talking about? Yeah. So yeah. I, I would say, you know, just be real. 
Um, put put your stuff out there. Be real with people. Show people what you have to offer, and, and it'll come. It might start slow, but you yeah. know, you stay consistent with anything, and it'll come. And I would also add to that real quick is to try not to get, um, just try not to get so influenced by everything that you're seeing on social media because it's easy to do that. So if you see someone doing infographics, then you're gonna want to do it. If you see somebody doing full days of eating, then you're gonna want to do that. If you want to do a competition or whatever it is, like just find your particular thing that you're good at and go with that yes. because it's going to be transparent and people can see through that stuff. And like he mentioned, it's already pretty oversaturated on social media. So really finding your spot and, and if maybe like home workouts, like I know a girl who does nothing but home workouts, that's it. And she ha she looks great. Um, and that's what, how, what's her selling point. She's like, I'll get you in shape and I'll do it all through home workouts. Could she do add in the gym and could she do other? Yeah, of course. But then it's like, it gets a little bit blurred if like you do a little bit of everything don't just, be off the wall yeah just pick like the one thing you're really good at and stick with it. or the one thing you really enjoy honestly yeah, like that's yeah. gonna gen genuinely being genuine and, and doing what you really enjoy doing it, it shows yeah. people know people that know if you will authenticity doing. thing yeah okay so when did you first find out you were pregnant this time around did you have a feeling or any symptoms um okay so like he mentioned we were trying to get pregnant we decided to stop trying completely so I stopped tracking I stopped tracking all my ovulation all that um, it really hadn't crossed my mind whatsoever I had gotten what I thought was food poisoning um, a night after one of our parties uh, our work parties and I was like okay I didn't even cross my mind that it could be pregnancy related I thought I got food poisoning a week later um, I realized that I was a couple days late on my period and I was like well that's kind of weird but you know I'm not gonna waste money on a pregnancy test and so I waited a little bit longer and then I still didn't get my period, so I was like, okay, this is really weird. I felt extremely bloated and pretty like tired, uh, but I was like, man, I just should probably get back on my dieting and exercising because I'm getting a little pudgy. And then eventually I was like, okay, I'm gonna just take the test just to see, you know? And I did it while he was at work. So I took the test and I found out that I was pregnant. So, so I found out technically like the actual date was May 7th. So it was two days after a bodybuilding show where I was wearing a crop top. Feeling like really pudgy. Oh, gee, <laughs> oh shoot. And okay, hold on. I'll start over. Okay, next question. So, what are some good ways to save money? Things that you've learned. Some good ways to manage your budget and your money, especially if you're trying to save a significant amount of money. I think the easiest thing is to, instead of focus so much on saving money, is to focus more on spending less. You know, thinking about being conscious of your of your purchases. Like, do I really need this? Uh, especially when it comes to big purchases because that will drain your bank account if, if you don't if you're spending all your money You're definitely not gonna save any money, but as far as actually putting money into a savings account I, I would say the first step is to pick an account That's not linked to your bank account something that you can't transfer over easily because if it makes it kind of difficult to transfer your savings over and less likely you're less likely to do it you might think about it a little bit more before actually doing the transfer or if it's something you, you know you want to purchase something right now and it takes 10 days to transfer it over that might give you more time to actually think about the purchase and maybe you end up just keeping it in your savings. Mm -hmm. Also is doing recurring uh, contributions to your savings. So right now I have a couple IRAs and a couple savings accounts I use. The IRAs are for long-term savings, those are for retirements. I have a short-term savings, it's called Acorns. And what that does is it links your debit cards and your credit cards to it and it basically rounds up every purchase you make. So if you make a purchase for $1.50, it's gonna round it up to $2 and put 50 cents into your savings. This is not gonna save you a whole lot of money, but after about a year, you might have a couple grand in there, especially if you put uh, small re reoccurring contributions. So every week, it puts like $25 in there, plus all the roundups. Mm -hmm. And it actually, you know, if, if you sign up for it, you set up all your stuff, and then you just delete the app, you might forget about it, and then a year later, have a couple thousand dollars in savings. Mm -hmm. So small steps like that, small amounts, reoccurring payments, and a, an account that is separate from your bank account that you use for daily purchases. So with Acorns, um, let's say we put in 500 bucks, like if, could we use it as a savings account, put the 500 bucks in there and then it would build? Yeah, actually. So that's a, a cool point, right? Yeah, so Acorns. We did that with our taxes. Yes, Acorns yeah. is actually an, an investment um, a, account, meaning you don't only get dividends off interest, but it's actually putting money in the stock market for you. It's putting money into portfolios for you, and you can choose like a, I think it's, you know, a high risk, low risk, moderate risk. We're in high risk, we're young right now, so we have a chance of actually making a lot of money off of it, but we also have a chance of losing money off of it. It depends on the stock market. If you keep it in there for a while though, even if there's a dip, it usually goes back up. So I definitely, you know, recommend putting it in something like that where it can actually make you profit. Mm -hmm. 
Uh -oh. One of the examples um, that what we did was for, since we're independent trainers, we have to set aside a certain percentage of taxes to pay at the end of the year. So out of all the money that we get, we set aside, I think it's what, 30% or something? We set aside 30%. And what we did was we were putting that 30% into the Acorns account so that it's not just sitting there. So it's building. Um, by the end of the year, we were able to profit money because we paid less to taxes than what was in the account. So, I mean, it worked. It was cool. All okay, right. so how did you make this trip happen? I know, I get, I get this a lot. Like, people are like, how are you doing this? How are you leaving for three months, not working, you know, going to a job or whatever? Um, do you want to answer that, or do you, we can kind of both answer. Yeah, I'll answer this. For the most part, I'm getting VA disability money and money to go to school. So I'm actually getting paid from the VA for my 10 years of service and to be actively going to school, taking online classes. That alone is enough to survive in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking, there's places out here that you can rent a condo for $200 a month. Health mm -hmm. care is extremely <laughs> cheap. Yes, the cost of living out here is insanely cheap. So my VA benefits alone will, will pretty much care okay. for us and our family. Now we're living a little bit more lavishly, which is, you know. My fault. It's <laughs> a good experience, you know, we're out here for three months, why not enjoy it? Why not, you know, actually feel like we're on vacation for three months? Um, we're working and training on online clients. Yeah. You know, we're charging, a, a very reduced rate for our clients, the ones who have been with us for a long time, to stay with us online while we're out here, so they can get you know cheaper training, and it's it's paying the bills, it's and it's us it's, it's letting us live pretty lavishly out here. Yeah, but and also school because that, yeah, that's, oh, okay. that's what I talked about earlier. But for those of you who can't work online or can't work mobily, first of all, there are ways of doing it. If you haven't read the Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, I suggest reading that because he talks about doing that in a corporate environment in a job where you, you aren't your own boss, where you can potentially work mobily for a uh, smaller income. It's something to think about. A smaller income in California, maybe not a good idea. A smaller income in Thailand, you're living Easy. like a damn king yeah, and working way here. less. But if say you can, no matter what, not work online, you cannot work from here, hey, maybe spend, take a year and save up 10 grand. For 10 grand, you can spend the summer in Thailand with your family. <laughs> Or take out a small loan. Hey, hey crazy. Baby. Take hey, out a small baby. loan. You gotta be quiet, dude. Take out a small loan and pay it off as a payment for the next four years. Yeah. Is that a great financial investment? No, but it's a great life investment. And experiences, you know. You may you may take out a ten thousand dollar loan, live out here for the summer, and pay it off two hundred and fifty bucks, three hundred bucks a month for four years. There's purchases that people make that I know that are a lot worse than that. Simply put, there, there's ways of doing it no matter what your career is or no matter what your your lifestyle is if you think that you can't get up and leave your job and then come back three months later and get that same job back or find a job of, of the similar pay then that's basically telling me you don't have faith in your skills but if you're a skilled person i promise you the jobs are always going to be there always. there's always if you're a good hard worker with a skill set then you're valuable you're valuable yeah. and you're going to find a way to make money it's all about just believing in yourself. And honestly, and it's, the thing is, you're never going to have, there's never going to be the right time. So many people are like, well, it's just not the right time. Like I'm in the middle of a transition. I'm going through a divorce or I'm going through this. I'm tra I'm moving here or whatever. There's, hello, that's life. You're never going to have a time where everything is just chill. Where everything is so easy and every, you're, getting, you're having money. you got a full work schedule. Your kids are good. Like relationships are good. You, it, life happens. And there's always going to be something that makes it difficult. And there's a million reasons why you shouldn't do it, but it's like, there's also a million reasons why you should. I think people are just scared and ultimately it's fear that holds people back. It's not that difficult to make the transitions that we've made. It's, it's a matter of just like trusting yourself and being willing to kind of like step outside that comfort zone. It is a little uncomfortable. We have a family. Like yes. It's, it's uncomfortable. You know, I've, he almost backed out once one time out of this thing because he was like, I don't know if, if we should do this, you know, but luckily he comes to his senses and he, yeah. <laughs> he's like, all right, we're going to do it. But I mean, it's, it's more possible than people think. Another reason too is that we're in Thailand. We're not in some expensive, extravagant place, you know, so it's we, very affordable. It's here. affordable. That's why we chose this place. Cool. Thank you, okay. Babe. Thank you, buddy. One thing I want to point out too, is that if you look at our, life situation. I got out of the military after 10 years of stability and income and healthcare and all that stuff. I got self-employed. We built our business for a year and then we dropped it all to come out here with a three-year-old and a pregnant wife. 
most people would think that that's pretty freaking crazy. And you know what? It kind of is. But now that we're out here living it, we realize like, this is an awesome life. Like, why don't we do more crazy shit more often? And you know what? I think that's just the outlook you have to have on life is don't play life safe. You get one of them. Yeah. You really got to, you got to go for it. Yeah. It's just, it's so, it's so, I don't know how, what clicked for us, but like, we hear this, these kinds of things all the time and it's almost just like, oh, it's like nails on a chalkboard because it's like people feel so handicapped by life and they're they're in this bubble and they're like, there's no way I could, like people will compliment us, like, because you're so lucky, like you get to travel the world and you get to do this and you get to work from home and it's like, you could have it too, but you're just choosing to live differently than I am. Like, I don't know. I don't. It's just you got you just gotta trust yourself and you well, gotta work hard for it. We're we're fucking ordinary people, and I think we're we're just choosing to do extraordinary things, and, and that's all it takes. That that's what's uh, happening. That's and, what we're doing. And not every single thing that we've um, set out to do has worked. You know, there have been other plans that we wanted to do that haven't worked, but yeah. we still tried, and it, you know what I mean. So on to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Right. We actually gotta get on a ferry ride because we're about to go to the PP Islands, and he's being a little crazy. So we're gonna film a, a part two to this, and um, it'll be up shortly after this one. So stay tuned. Here's <laughs> I